is Short-Term Rental Management, the show that is all about short-term rental property management with your host, yours truly, Luke Carl. <laughs> Here we are. We did it. We did it. Look at, let, me get, let me look at you guys. You are so good looking. And it is uh, it's a bit intimidating, uh, honestly, to be in front of such royalty. And uh, everybody, welcome to uh, Short-Term Rental Management. It's lovely to have you. Uh, I'm Cashflow Carl, of course, uh, and I am uh, married to the lovely Avery Carl. And uh, I need to be very careful today because her mom is on the call. So uh, let, me, let me introduce the topic and then I'll introduce our guest. We're talking today about property management softwares. Each one of us is going to uh, represent our own uh, the software of choice, and uh, we'll talk. We'll talk uh, uh, an overview of others that we may have some familiarity with that are, we're not using as well, and then we'll dive into uh, the pros and cons of of the ones that we are actually using at the moment. So, uh, with that, I, I will introduce uh, Cindy Allen, who is Avery's mom. Uh, she has uh, one cabin in the Smoky Mountains, and uh, she is using. Well, I'll let you say, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Mom. Uh, what what management software are you using? And tell us a little bit about your property. Um, it's a cabin in a neighborhood in the Smokies. It's a three bedroom, three bath with a big movie room. Um, I use Guesty for Host, which I had a very quick shortcut to all of this through my son in law Luke, who set me up. So. He just put me on. It was your porter at the time, and I've just stayed with it. Um, so okay, Avery's mom, from... so old school that she uh, was using it back when it was called your porter, which of course uh, <laughs> they did change names. I think it's been quite a while ago now, about two years ago. All right, that leads me to Ethan. Ethan uh, is also OG. Tell us a little bit about your properties, and uh, and then also what property management software are you using as of today. Yeah, so have two cabins in the Smokies and a duplex down in Gulf Shores. And uh, as you mentioned, I'm an OG, have been using IGMS since you recommended it to me uh, on our the Management Monday before Management Monday, the the, the old phone call with Luke. So oh. uh, stuck with it ever since, never changed. So using that IGMS. Is old school. Yep, love it. And for those of you that don't know, a Management Monday is a class I teach for short-term shop clients. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but... Uh, wonderful. So how many, again, how many cabins? Two cabins and a duplex in Gulf Shore. So how big are these cabins? Uh, a studio cabin and a two bedroom cabin. Okay. Little guys love the yep. little guys. And the duplex is a two one on each side down in Gulf Shores. Uh, freestanding duplex. You own both units. That's correct. Yep. You got it. Wonderful. Okay, great. Uh, we'd like to hear more about that in general. Uh, but uh, Mr. Kramer is is a uh, is really de oh, real deal OG. I mean, this guy's been around uh, in the Smoky Mountains for a long time and uh, owns the diner, which is the name of it, and also what it is, which I love simplicity. Hence the short term management show uh, in Sevierville. So, Mr. Kramer, tell us a little bit about you and your properties, and then plug the diner too. I love that place. <laughs> well, as you said, been around a long time. Uh, at the moment, we've got uh, two properties in the Smokies and four properties here along the Destin and Miramar Beach area. Uh, owner res user. Oh, boy. <laughs> Started with IGMS. Mm, wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, I'm sure it's evolved since then. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, found my way to owner res and uh, haven't left since. Straight from IGMS <laughs> to owner res. Yep. Okay. Ethan, you stick, you've stuck it out with the same management software the whole time. Is that correct? That's correct. Never uh, changed. And Mavery's mom, you've only had one software other than the name change, correct? One for a year and a half. Uh, Chuck, tell me about your uh, properties, a brief overview as far as size, maybe square footage, et cetera. Sure. Well, start off with we have our, our majestic one, which is uh, eight bedrooms, a little over 4,000 square feet, uh, unrestricted view of the mountains. Um, it's, a, it's a great property up on uh, Ski Mountain, right in Gatlinburg. And then we got a little two-bedroom out in Weirs Valley, middle of nowhere. Can't even see another cabin. Uh, very secluded. People love that. No view, no water, a small creek nearby, but uh, uh, that's not what people come for. They come to get away, get the real mountain experience. Now, down here on the beaches, uh, we have one right across from the beach. Um, you could call it a duplex. It's a four bedroom, but it's uh, set up in a way that we can rent out half at a time. Uh, and frankly, it rents better that way. Uh, we've got another six bedroom with a pool about two blocks from the beach in Miramar Beach. 
And then we got an old style Florida home on stilts, <laughs> uh, three bedroom, two bath in the Frangista Beach area. So, and you did, uh, in essence, relocate to be closer to these properties, correct? Um, sort of. Being close to the properties was a factor, but it was not the driving factor. Okay. That's, so, but you are. Local and then we got the diner. The, and the diner, yeah. yeah. So go go ahead with the diner, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, if you're a host and you've been to your cabin in the Smokies, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, we're right in front of Lowe's. And we all know that when hosts go to their cabins in the Smokies, you spend a lot of time at Lowe's and Home Depot. So uh, we're, we're the silver building you got to drive by. Yeah. Um, been there for 20 plus years. You know, stalwart member of the community. We're extremely popular with the locals, uh, you know, which is kind of a sign. It's It's like they tell you when you travel, look for the trucks for the best restaurants and you know, when you're in places like the Smokies, you look to find out where the locals go. So, uh, you uh, you are local to your Florida properties, and obviously not local to the Tennessee properties. Is that uh, fair to say? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. And uh, Ethan, are you local to your properties or no? Nope. Uh, Southern Ohio lives in Ohio. Properties are in both uh, Tennessee and Alabama. And uh, Avery's mom, are you local to your property? I'm not. I'm okay. in Mississippi and there and it's in Gatlinburg. Okay. Uh, in essence, could say you're one state away, but it's it's really you got to drive through two to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And through a lot of traffic. Right. You were just, you were just there. How far is it? I was drive? just there. It was seven hours. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Love it. Love it. Um, so Chuck, talk to me about why you switched. Uh, you dabbled with IGMS in the early days. Was it Air GMS at the time? Um, folks might not realize they, there was a name change there as well. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write that down. I'll circle back to the name change thing. But um, uh, how did you how did you get into Air GMS, IGMS, and uh, what what triggered the change? Well, when I started, I was looking to see what was out there, and frankly, there wasn't much. <laughs> um, and then this guy on Bigger Pockets, I don't know this this Luke fellow <laughs> mentioned that he was using or had just started to use Air GMS, and that he recommended it. Um, that moved it up a little bit on my list. Oh, cool. But I did check out the the alternatives at the time. Uh, owner Res was almost brand new. Uh, it was kind of bare bones back then. And I stuck with IGMS for about, well, actually, I was in the middle of the name change. Um, I stuck with them for about six months. And they just, at the time, they just weren't doing what I wanted to do. I, it, it was too hands-on for me. Uh, I wanted more automation. So uh, when I looked around Owner Res, as a techie, uh, kind of appealed to me, especially with its rules and its triggers where I could set things up to just go off and do things when something happened. And uh, been there ever since. Okay, wonderful. Well, let me tell a little bit about myself. I've got eight properties uh, across Tennessee and Florida, East Tennessee, uh, similar to all uh, three of our guests here uh, in the Smokies. And then I also have uh, beach houses along the uh, Emerald Coast of Florida from Destin, which is where Chuck is as well, uh, down to the Forgotten Coast in, in uh, a little bit further south, um, past Panama City Beach. Um, I I uh, first discovered these management softwares uh, through AirGMS. Was the first time I ever heard of really what you know this thing, um, which I believe was somewhere around five years ago. And uh, I'll open the conversation to everybody here after this uh, in their opinions or at least how they stumbled on it. But to my knowledge, that was really when these things first started about four or five years ago, give or take, if memory serves, and there were very few of them. Um, and IGMS, Air GMS at the time was the first that I was aware of. And uh, there were a few of them starting to pop up here and there. Uh, and uh, they were a little wonky, especially in the way of Verbo uh, integration. Uh, I should also mention, since you guys have already done this, I'm using Hospitable today, although I have been through uh, the gamut, basically. I started with uh, Air GMS, IGMS. I stayed with them for quite some time. Uh, I did switch at that point to Your Porter, um, uh, which eventually became uh, uh, Guesty for hosts. Big difference between that and, and Guesty Guesty. We'll talk about that. Uh, and today I am with Hospitable, um, and I will be representing them today. I've also dabbled in Owner Res. I wouldn't say that I actually used it. Uh, I did sign up for it and, and integrate all of my properties twice. Uh, it did not work out for me, and uh, we'll talk about why uh, and the uh, ups and downs of what happened there uh, when we get deeper into to owner res. But for me, again, I think this all started about four or five years ago 
Um, I, I read a, uh, an article about channel managers, which I believe that kind of translated over, at least at the time, from the hotel industry. Uh, and these uh, these softwares were doing their best to try and get, you know, integrated with uh, Airbnb, which at the time it seemed to me, and I, I believe Chuck's probably very well versed in this subject as well, uh, it seemed to me the Airbnb thing was not really too much of an issue other than the fact that uh, I, I did quickly realize that Airbnb didn't really know this was going on because they would, uh, you would call Airbnb and they would say, why are all your uh, your settings grayed out? <laughs> and none of their customer service had any idea what this integration was. And then, um, and then Verbo. Verbo, uh, at the time, again, AirGMS uh, was put on my, on my, my radar. There were other softwares. Um, I couldn't na name uh, off the top of my head which what they were. I would imagine some of them are still around, but none of them, to my knowledge, would integrate directly with Verbo to the point where the software itself was dropping messages in the guests' Verbo messaging uh, on their dashboard. It was all off Verbo in email only. And for me personally, I knew that that was, that was not going to work. So I, I, AirGMS, IGMS at the time was the only one that I found uh, again, four or five years ago, that would do that, and it was revolutionary for me. When that when that happened, when I first got hooked up, I did a sales call with them and the whole thing, and I hooked them up, and I was like, "Oh man, this," you know, because here's the deal. I I think we need to talk from an outsider's perspective. Somebody coming in now doesn't realize uh, the differences, and the main difference was that everything was like it was two separate countries, right? Airbnb and Verbo did not like each other, uh, and especially what I'm talking about there as far as their websites being cohesive. They were like not interested in getting along with each other. And so this I, I, Air GMS was like, wow, I can like, you know, they're co-mingling now. I can, uh, my Airbnb, my Verbo are getting along. I can send one message and it goes out to all, uh, all of my guests, uh, regardless of software, regardless of platform. And of course, the other big deal at the time was, uh, was pricing. You know, I could price. This is way. This is before I was aware of Price Labs or, or Beyond Pricing. Um, I could price my uh, calendars on both Airbnb and Verbo from AirGMS, uh, and it would push to both platforms instead of having to uh, do it separately. Back in the day, and I'll get ready to turn this over to Chuck because he has been around for so long. Back in the day, uh, you you noobs have no idea how good you've got it. You really have no idea. I had you literally had to go through your entire year on Airbnb and price basically every night. You could highlight chunks and do chunks at a time, things like that. And then Verbo, you'd have to go over there and do it again, you know, and you'd have discrepancies. It would be almost impossible to not have discrepancies. And, and but Verbo back then, uh, they used to have seasons and you would set up like, OK, this set of chunks of this month are this price. And as those seasons came, it was actually a little more advanced over on Verbo, if memory serves with these seasons. And I, I, I gave them cute little names like summer sizzle and winter warm up, which is a call we've had here, you know, uh, at a uh, uh, short term shop. But um, it was the air GMS thing that was like, wow, I can, this is like making my life so much easier. I can mix, I mix, mix them together and uh, they spit out one final product onto both platforms. And it was an amazing thing. Uh, Chuck, how am I doing there on my history lesson? Am I off on anything or is there anything I missed? Uh, the only thing you're off a little bit on is the time. This was more like seven or eight years ago. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, did you find that to be true? And was AirGMS the first one that, uh, and were you looking for ver verbo cohesion? I, yeah, I was looking for something to make this as passive for me as possible. Um, at the time I was, I was re completely retired and part of me wanted to stay that way. Uh, not really the case anymore, but um, the, the the landscape then, the, most of the software out there was, was targeted towards large property managers and happened to have a level of integration with one or the other. But usually the integration was custom. Airbnb did not have an API and Verbo uh, did not have an, uh, an API back then. Um, and of course it wasn't Verbo. It was vacation rentals by owner. Uh, they didn't make that name change till, I don't know, four years ago. And we were ago. still out, we had home away too, which was separate, but not really separate. That's right. Yeah. Home away was separate. And then they, they acquired it around 2010 or so. 
uh, but it's, they continued running it as a separate operation. And the other thing that made it difficult between them was Airbnb was one system. No matter where you were, it was just one system. Verbo was a collection of different systems in different countries. So if you wanted to appeal to uh, uh, folks in Mexico or Canada, you also had to update your rates and your descriptions on those sites, even though it was part of Verbo. They, their own systems were not uh, synchronizing. So uh, that was a marketing pain. But it often worked. Um, you know, we, in fact, it probably works better. When thinking back on it, we pulled in more international people back then. Um, who knows what's going on behind the scenes these days? <laughs> uh, but Air GMS was it. Um, in the beginning, as as you say, you don't know how easy it is today. These systems didn't sync their dates and calendars either, and that was the biggest reason to move toward a piece of software was so that you could avoid double bookings. You would get an Airbnb booking in, and you have to quickly jump over to Verbo and block those dates off. Um, Air GMS was one of the first, besides besides the large ones. This, by the, by the way, one of the old old time guys in this group is Escapia, which is still around, um, but it's it's targeted toward very large, like three hundred plus property people. Um, but syncing up your calendars was really important. You didn't want the double bookings. Hugely important. I'll be honest. Sometimes I'd still tell that story to this day where you'd have to jump over to Verbo and block it off and jump over to Airbnb and block it off. And I look back and I'm like, did I just not know how to do it back then? But you are now confirming that that, that in fact did exist. You, If you got an Airbnb booking, it would not sync with Verbo, correct? That's right. It wasn't until much later they came out with the uh, I, ICS, the iCal syncing. And that was only about once an hour. So you still had to jump around to be sure you weren't going to get a double booking. Wasn't which was much later that they moved it down to being just a few minutes. Which was a breakthrough. At the time, it was uh, – so in other words, for, for folks that are new, Airbnb and Verbo finally decided to talk to each other. Uh, and the only reason they were talking to each other was because I would assume that they were – these double bookings were probably costing them a ton of money because they would – say, well, uh, okay, I guess that's our fault. We're going to have to cancel this and move this guest. And it just got to be, you know, an upstream situation is my guess. So all of a sudden we had this thing on our dashboard where you you had an Airbnb iCal and a Verbo iCal on each uh, of the individual platforms. And there was a place to put it on the other platform. And it's like, wait a minute. So now Airbnb knows what's happening on my Verbo and Verbo knows what's happening on my Airbnb. This is huge. This is massive. Chuck, if you remember any idea where in relation to uh, the air gms you know uh the whole management software and that uh, uh ical syncing that which came first or was it all kind of bang bang i don't i don't quite remember it was all about the same time uh you know short-term rentals started becoming a, a bigger thing uh not like it is today but bigger around 2011 2012 and that's when i think some of these entrepreneurial types looked at it and, and said hey i can do something or i can pay somebody to build something for me um, owner res's history is that it started, uh, uh, with a, their owners and they wanted something to integrate the two systems. Uh, I suspect that air GMS probably started the same way people fulfilling their own needs. And we still see a lot of that today. So speaking of today, we now have what over 120 of these, uh, softwares. And uh, well, I want to hear everybody's thoughts on that. Uh, what, uh, what do you make of all that? Uh, I guess specifically Chuck and, and Ethan, but uh, what, what, and Avery's mom, you're welcome on all of this, but what do we make of this hundred? Cause I think that's now it's gone the other direction where if you're brand new and you come in, I mean, that's the number one question we see on Facebook groups on bigger pockets forum uh, anywhere on the internet, which management sof software should I use? Like, I mean, you just hear that like a hundred times a day and it, and to me, I'll give my answer and I'll turn it over. Uh, to me, is it doesn't matter. You just pick one. There's 120 plus. I heard that 120 number about three weeks ago. And to, it's like, at this point, just throw a dart and pick one. You know, I mean, they're all essentially performing the same job. They are going to have, obviously, nuances. One of them is going to look better to your eye than the other one. Uh, my spreadsheet uh, might not work for your brain, but it works for my, you know, that kind of thing. This software doesn't work for your brain. It works for my brain. So... Um, I think our, our job on today's call is, of course, to sift through that as best we can. But, uh, guys, what do you, what, how do you feel about this 120 plus thing? And, and I can't even imagine being a noob coming into this today, you know? Ethan? 
Yeah, no, I I, uh, I think you guys kind of mentioned this is still a new thing, uh, quote unquote new, right? And all these companies are trying to figure it out. But over time, you're going to have the top five, top six, something like that come in and be your mainstays. And then you'll just have these one-offs. But uh, yeah, you, you when you look at your post or when you look at the groups, that, all the short-term rental groups, you, you don't get a lot of questions about the one-offs. You get a lot of questions about the main, the ones we're talking about today. I just think that's how it'll be. Those ones will fizzle out. Or they may offer something alongside of that, uh, along with the the product. The, their main product may not be that. It may just be an add-on to what they have. So I think through time, it'll fizzle down to five, six major ones, and the rest of them will just be there, but not really to anyone's use. That makes sense. Is it safe to say it was like a, the floodgates opened and it was a battle to the top kind of yep. thing? So that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I started three years ago in IGMS. Uh, you you were still using IGMS, Luke. Yeah, I don't think you or you were just getting ready to make the switch, and you, there wasn't a lot about about that still at that time that I'm now. And so it's only a three year plus thing for all these all these little companies starting up. Chuck, we've seen this in a lot of different uh, areas of software. You know, everyone feels like they have a a better way of doing it, or maybe they need a localized version for some reason. You know, something specific to their market. But they do eventually, and to use Ethan's words, fizzle out or they get acquired. Um, we've seen a lot of money coming in this space. If you paid attention, I mean, Hospitable's gotten a big investment. Uh, IGMS has gotten a big investment. Guesty uh, got a, you know, a huge investment. Hostfully, which isn't represented here, um, they're backed by venture capital. So there's a lot of money coming into this space. And in some cases, they're going to look at it and say, we don't need to build it. Somebody else has already built it. Built it. Let's go buy it. Um, I mean, that's why Guesty bought your porter. Right. Let's talk about the name changes briefly because you did bring it up. We have seen a ton of name changes, which, of course, uh, is in a bit, you know, just to look at it from a business standpoint, is because they're being bought and or sold. Um, starting with, uh, to my knowledge, and then I'll turn it over to Chuck with whatever he has to add. Uh, Air GMS. Now, this is a little bit of a different story. Air GMS, again, is, is is super old school in this space. And at a certain time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Chuck, I know you know all this stuff, Airbnb went around and started buying any company name that had the word Air or B&B in the name. And so I, to my knowledge, they offered Air GMS a check. Uh, could not have gone down that way. I don't know. But uh, for the outsider's perspective, it seems like maybe they were written a check to change their name, at which point they... Decided to rip off Apple, I guess, instead of uh, Airbnb and went with IGMS. And uh, so that's one name change. And then we had uh, Your Porter, which uh, used to be a standalone. It was a pretty awesome software. Honestly, in my opinion, it was almost identical to, to IGMS. I uh, used them both extensively. Um, they looked almost the same and functioned kind of almost the same. I couldn't even tell you, honestly, why. I, I, I'll maybe dabble in that when, when Ethan starts talking about his software why I switched to your Porter. And then all of a sudden your Porter becomes guesty for hosts. And that's where it starts to get confusing to the noob because you do have guesty, which was their original software. And it's a quite, quite a different thing than guesty for hosts. They basically have kept everything intact from your Porter on guesty for hosts. Uh, it's very similar to what it used to be just as a name change and guesty guesty for lack of a better way to put it is much more robust, almost to my, in my opinion, almost an owner as competitor. It's, it's got a lot of functionality, a lot of offerings, uh, and it is definitely more involved. Join me live every Thursday for a weekly Q and a all about short term rental. If you like my vibe. If you're digging the long hair extraordinaire cash flow, Carl, and want to ask me questions in real time, join me at strquestions.com. It's a lot of fun. Strquestions.com. Um, to me, business standpoint wise, I think the name was probably, I think I would have kept the old name, honestly, to differentiate the two because I put, you read on these Facebook groups, guesty, 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 nine times out of 10 in the Facebook groups we hang out in, they're referring to guesty for hosts, but they're calling it guesty, which is a completely different software. So it gets a little confusing. Uh, anything to add to that, Chuck? Well, I think uh, in terms of guesty, I think they have a, a long term plan, a, a roadmap for probably integrating the two products. Um, Guesty for hosts being sort of a lightweight version of Guesty, a way so that you could subscribe to only certain features. Um, 
because that that has worked well for some of the other companies. So I can definitely see them going that way. And let's not forget Hospitable, pre uh, previously known as Smart B&B. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Great point. They did change their name, and uh, one would assume that that was, I guess, Chuck, the same as the Air GMS Smart B and B again, Air Air B and B, and then it, it, maybe I, was I, it, it money probably was. Hands? Yeah, it, it probably was, but at the same time, I think they remember they started out as a messaging product, primarily okay. a messaging product, um, and and that's still like the core. When you when I think hospitable, the biggest reason I have for thinking about it is its messaging. Um, I think they decided at one point that they needed to start to add property management features and they were just getting ahead of that. They already had their roadmap out. You know, the, the, we're past the days of someone sitting in their basement and chewing this stuff out in a week, you know, to do this right and get enterprise class because you're going to be handling money. It can take a year or more to roll out new features like that. I think they had that in mind all along and the change in name from smart B and B to, to a uh, hospitable uh, was to broaden and also get people to stop thinking about them as just a messaging product. Which is, you know, okay, let's start diving into the, uh, uh, this is a great opportunity to dive into the different softwares here. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll go last. I'm going to start with Ethan because he's still using what a lot of us are, are now coming to consider one of the OGs, uh, AirGMS slash IGMS. So Ethan, uh, you've been with them for quite a while now. Have you ever uh, had some sort of urge to switch? Have you looked at switching? Uh, are you very happy where you're at? No, I, I've gotten FOMO a couple times. Uh, a lot of a lot of people in the groups that I'm in are switching, and and I've went and at least looked, but nothing has ever caught my attention to make me want to change. Um, been been happy with IGMS. Uh, you know, you're going to ask some questions here in a little bit. I, IGMS is basic. It doesn't it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it does what we need it to do. And we've been happy with that. And so not looking to switch, uh, looked at owner res one time there, looked at uh, what you're using now, um, but nothing's ever uh, excited me enough to make me to change from IGMS. Yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And I yep. agree with that. I think honestly, back to the 120 throw a dart thing, that's probably the biggest thing to take away from this conversation. If you're new, if you're overwhelmed, you're like, Oh my God, which software do I pick? That's where Avery's mom comes in. You know, it's like, she's the perfect example and we'll get to that. It really almost kind of doesn't matter in my opinion. So uh, Ethan, let's go ahead and dive into to IGMS. Um, if you want to give us a brief overview of what you like and you don't like about it, and then I'll ask you a few questions. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it does what it needs to do. As I said, it's going to send automated messages. You're able to set that up. Um, it's got access for your, your cleaner and all that stuff. If you want to get that hooked up. Uh, talk to me um, about the cleaner. How does that work? Am I uh, hooking them up with their email address as a, as an employee or how does the cleaner work? Yeah, that's how you, yeah, that's how, yes, is how you do it. We actually, well, we don't use that feature, but it is a feature that we have. Our cleaners use resort cleaning. So we're hooked into that system that way, but um, you do have that ability here. If you co-host or or if you have other people that help you, you're able to just share access to that one property with them uh, on, on IGMS. Um, it does have a very, very limited direct booking link where you can you can promote that and have direct bookings if you wanted to do that. Um, it, hold on, it, hold on. Let's let's not gloss over that. Do you did right. you create the website and are you dabbling in that at all or? Yeah, we well, we created the website and as I said, it's very very basic. It is. I don't want to say embarrassingly basic, but it's pretty, pretty basic, but it does give you that option. We are using Boostly, so we're not using the IGMS. It, it does have a widget that connects to Boostly, which is important to ask if you're going to use Boostly, if it has a calendar widget and, and IGMS does. But uh, if you didn't want to pay for Boostly, it does have the option to have the, the direct booking link. Um, for, hold on. For those of us that don't know, what's Boostly? Boostly is, uh, well, the, check out the Short Term Shop YouTube. Uh, uh, Mark Simpson's on there. He's the creator of Boostly. It is a direct booking website guide, basically. They'll, they'll build the website for it if you want to pay them. They'll also give you all the templates on how to do it, and you can build them. Uh, and you just have a, an actual, uh, uh, I want to say it's WordPress off the top of my head, but it's an actual direct booking website that that looks classy, looks nice, very, very nice. And we're, we're kind of promoting that, so... What do we know about class around here? I mean, let's be real. Other than Avery's mom, of course. Uh, but <laughs> okay, cool. And um, 
So let's talk about, you know, just a brief overview of, of IGMS. Uh, where, where do you give it? Let's say a one to 10 here. Uh, uh, question number one is uh, ease of use. How, how is a, I'm brand new. I'm integrating today. How easy is it to hook up? And then also on a day to day basis, where would you rank it? Uh, eight. It is very easy to use. As I, as I mentioned, it's a basic platform. It doesn't have a lot of the, I, in my opinion, extra bells and whistles. Very, very simple to get a property in there. Very simple to get it linked up, the API connection, and, and you're good to go. Um, it also, I'll make sure to mention this because it'll be a big one. You, it, it doesn't directly link with. Yeah, there you go. I like that. I should have had that ready. I should have. Yeah, As, held up an eight there. It, it doesn't directly link with a lock system, but you're able to use a software called Jervis Software, uh, Jervis Systems. It's called Jervis Systems. Five bucks a month. It auto uh, integrates with Schlage, so you can have the Schlage IGMS integration where it auto creates the lock and throws it in your automated message, uh, the code. So. So it's a third party integration to Schlage, 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 Schlage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got IGMS, Jervis, and Schlage all connected there. Which leads me to question number two on a one to 10, where do you give it functionality overall? Like how many cool bells yeah. and whistles does it have? No, I, I mean, I, I would say four. Uh, it's four to five. It's average, right? Uh, that's where I put function uh, the functionality at. Okay, great. Customer service. Uh, and I guess before I even ask you that, do you find yourself being a type of person that is uh, interested in contacting customer service or do you more so figure it out on your own? And then, of course, where do you rank their customer service? Yeah, no, I, we, we, uh, I say we, my wife and I would do this together. We, we definitely try to figure it out on our own. But if at all, we've reached out to customer service throughout the years. <laughs> instant response and i say instant same day they're they'll getting back to you either fixing the problem or more questions uh honestly nine nine ten on the 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 customer service scale they're they're very responsive very quick to get it get it fixed they are you are reaching out to uh igms customer service via so there's a live the dashboard yeah yeah I'll, you, you log in there's a live chat you can chat them if they're available to chat right back or might say hey we'll, we'll email you here and in, in however long to, to get back to you. So just a live chat. Okay. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, hospitable is the same. I will cover that in just a minute. Financial reporting. If I want to know how much money I am making, how seamless is it and how accurate is it? Uh, I would, uh, once again, it's probably going to be average. We're looking at the, the five range. It, it's going to give you your basic reports. It's going to give you a payout report. If you want to see how much you've been paid out, it's got a, a monthly revenue report that you can look at and see each property breakdown of the revenue. And if you want to see how much money you have in upcoming reservations, um, you're able to do that. Uh, I do believe it is accurate. It's easy to pull it's just a, a button to click, easy to change the months that you want to look at, but nothing fancy, just the basics. Got it. Wonderful. All right. Uh, anything else we need to know about IGMS? Uh, do you have uh, an argument uh, as to why we should, uh, you know, yeah. you don't work for them or anything, but talk us into it. Well, no, I, 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 I let me miss, mention the cons because you did ask that, ask that. So two things, one slow connection with Verbo that may be everywhere, but if, if I get something in Verbo, it's like a 15, 10 to 15 minute delay for me to get that that booking so there is a delay there that you have uh, at least i found that on my end and we've messaged them and they know about it and there's nothing nothing that they've done yet to fix that also in the world of apps on our phone the app is not good uh it is the web version of the thing it's the same exact thing so if you're on the web you're on the app I, it, it's not an app friendly thing which could sway some people away um but the, the two negatives uh, overall, as I, I, my sales pitch would be, if you're looking for something that's relatively uh, inexpensive to, to get started with, right? If you're in that new stage, maybe you're looking for something, very cheap option to get started, very basic option, easy to use. Got, it has everything you need and, and, and to get your property up and running quickly and to get you set up, getting your, your calendars linked. It just is a fine system, does a good job at a relatively uh, reasonable price. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to go next. Let's slide into Hospitable uh, because I did start my career with the one that uh, Ethan is using now, uh, IGMS. Uh, and then I went to Your Porter, which uh, became Guesty for Host. We'll get into that in a second. And I am now currently with Hospitable. As a guy that has switched a lot of times, I will say that uh, I don't know if the switch was worth it. <laughs> uh, the switch is not that difficult uh, in some cases. But um, I will say that uh, it is more difficult switching from one certain software to another certain software. In other words, if you go into owner res and you're trying to switch to something else, 
anything in Onorez to me is difficult. Uh, but uh, in and out of hospitable, for instance, uh, as far as switching is concerned, um, I, I'm actually going to write that down as a uh, as a fifth question. Uh, switching, which will only pertain in this instance to uh, Mr. Kramer, but I will ask him when we get to that switching. So for me, switching from IGMS to your porter to uh, hospitable, I mean, it wasn't fun. Uh, it wasn't uh, the end of the world, though. Um, and I will say that in and out of hospitable is probably the easiest. So let me just let me just take that and slide it right into hospitable in general. Uh, hospitable, in my opinion, I think in most people's opinion, is probably the easiest software overall. So ease of use, I'm giving it a 10. I'm going to give it a 10. I don't think I have a 10 uh, logo for my, my cards here, but um, it is very easy. I mean, you could have hospitable set up. Uh, again, I was on my third software by the time I set it up for the first time, but I'm talking two hours. Like you, you can get it done on your lunch break in most per, in most cases. Again, depending on how many properties you have, that kind of thing. Um, it is very simple. That's kind of its whole thing. Uh, it's a very good looking, very sexy dashboard. Uh, to me, it kind of resembles Airbnb's website. Similar colors, some similar uh, click click of the button. You know, they're all the things are all kind of in the same spots. Um, so I'm going to give it a ten for ease of use, functionality. Uh, and you'll see a trend here. The more, the easier it is to use, the less functioning functions it has uh, with these softwares. So, uh, hospitable, you know, and again, as Chuck mentioned, it started out as the like you know, badass ninja messaging software. It was all about messaging, uh, and many people have still to this day use hospitable for their messaging while using Onorez for the heavy lift. Because it is, it does, it just shines big time when it comes to messaging, and they have they have uh, AI set up where you can, um, uh, it, if it if it sees the word swimming pool, it will do an automatic reply based on what your parameters are, things like that. But um, overall functionality of hospitable, I will say this is it's a little on the low side. Um, maybe let's give it a three. Okay, uh, customer service hospitable ten. Uh, very similar to what Ethan's talking about. Um, I do find they get back to you very quickly. Uh, you just start a chat on their dashboard. It's a little drop down on the bottom right-hand corner. They generally write back pretty quickly. That being said, I will also say that uh, anytime I've needed something or found myself messaging uh, that little chat bot, I've usually been able to figure out what the issue was before they even replied because that website, again, is quite frankly, so simple. There's also plenty of YouTubes out there for all these softwares, by the way. Um, customer service, 10 for hospitable. Financial reporting, hospitable, doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it a two. Uh, they do have downloadable spreadsheets that you can, what's the term I'm looking for here? Chuck, Chuck CSV, is that what it is? Uh, yes. CSV. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Okay. CSV. So they do have CSVs, which you can drop into your, your Excel, et cetera. Um, they are rather confusing, uh, and they also do not have totals, which is really annoying. So I would have to drop this into my spreadsheet and then f create a formula for the total myself, which is, again, not a huge deal, but it's not anywhere near clicking a button such as what Ethan has. And you can find out kind of what you're making for the month and the year, uh, and Mrs. Uh, Allen has as well, and on hers, we'll get into her next. Financial reporting, hospitable, it stinks. Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, the the downfall of uh, hospitable. <laughs> that being said, I I do use hospitable and I have no intentions to switch. I get my financials uh, from two places. I have an in-house guy, so that's awesome. Not everybody has that luxury, but I also uh, can get my financials from Price Labs. Price Labs financials not all that easy to pull. Um, they are rather confusing, and you have to every single time go in there and reset the day and the month. Uh, from start to finish and the day, day of the month start, day of the month uh, finish. And so it's a little annoying, but it does produce fairly accurate numbers. Um, so I get my financials from Price Labs if I need something in a hurry or I go to my, my guy and my spreadsheets. Um, and then uh, switching. I already covered that question number five. Switching to and from Hospitable, I would say it's probably the easiest. And I will use that as my argument as to why to choose Hospitable. Number, number one, it is very, very easy, simple does everything I needed to do. Um, if you're looking for bells and whistles, it's not for you. But if you want simple, and also if you're new um, and you're considering the fact that maybe you would end up switching to another software later, 
I think that that's another plus for hospitable. Not only is it the easiest to set up, at least in my experience, it's also the easiest to switch to another one because it's just not that robust to begin with. You're not like switching uh, an entire universe of gadgets and gizmos, you know? So um, two great reasons to start with uh, hospitable. And again, I'm a guy that's been doing this a really long time. I've got over 4,000 reservations under my belt. Uh, owner of the longest running Airbnb in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and I use what I'm I'm considering a kind of a perfect software for noobs. Uh, so there it is on Hospitable. Uh, did I miss anything, guys? Uh, are we good on that one? Should we move on? Chuck, did you want to add anything? Has anybody had any experience with or Have you ever done the, the owner res Hospitable thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I ran Hospitable for over a year. Oh, on top of owner res. On top of owner okay, res. Just, we'll get into that more. But if you got a little brief thing that I may have missed, go ahead and. Well, I wanted to try to focus on all the positives here, but uh, I mean, it, the only the biggest thing I can say, well, a couple of things. It was easy to integrate the two, and this touches a little bit on how easy you said it was to switch. Very little of your true important information resides in Hospitable. It's all in Airbnb and Burbo. Right. So as you move from one package to another, you're going to pull in most of that. This is not API. Is that correct? Uh, Hospitable is not API? Hospitable uses a Airbnb's API. Um, they may now use Verbo, maybe for property management, but there is no messaging API for Verbo. Can you explain that what that is? Explain what API stands for and what it means. Okay. Uh, easiest way it, it, it stands for application programming interface. And I know I lost half the audience right there. <laughs> Everybody fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's equate this a little bit to email. Um you can have an email application that talks to Gmail and you do everything you, you want to do in your mail application, like on the iPhone. Or you can bring up a web browser, go to Gmail, and then do things there yourself. That Gmail has a standard API that allows other systems to talk to it. Um, in Verbo's case, they have that for the property management side, but they never developed one for messaging. There's no way to get into Verbo messaging. Uh, they've been promising it for a year. I understand we're very close and they're actually working with two of the larger companies to vet that API and test it. One of which is represented here today. Um, but what Hospitable did, and back when they were in their smart BNB days, is they found a way to simulate a user session. So they're taking your information, they're logging on as you, and then they're simulating a session to input the message and then retrieve any new messages. You may have noticed there's a uh, uh, when you get new Verbo messages in from a guest, there's a delay. If there was an API, there'd be almost no delay. Um, what I saw was, and unfortunately, it started to become a problem for me. Um, in some cases, my guests are looking for some sort of real-time response, especially if there's a problem. Um, and my goal was to try to keep messaging on platform, um, but without necessarily taking phone calls. <laughs> uh, we know how that is. But I would get messages about issues that wouldn't show up for 20 or 30 minutes. And by then, if it's a leaking pipe or maybe you know the handle broke off the faucet or um, that just wasn't acceptable. I, I And in the long run, I ended up leaving hospital because of the verb. The verb of messaging was not timely enough for me. Um, I also had some reliability issues. As Verbo continued to make update to their systems and they were making them faster and faster, Hospitable was having trouble making adjustments to the method that they were using to send the Verbo messages. And I was finding that I had guests that were not getting messages like your check-in instructions or not getting it. Um, I went through a period where instead of getting it two days ahead of time, they were getting it a day after. <laughs> and I'm sure you've been through this, Luke, the, the frequent messages about you need to reauthorize your Verbo account. On, on, on Hospitable? Yeah. Yes. They have, uh, they're not as uh, as frequent as they used to be. Um, yeah. Although, again, one more thing I like about Hospitable, uh, they do have a big flag at the top of the screen. If there's an issue between either Airbnb or Verbo or mm -hmm. some sort of thing, they warn you about it. Uh, which is fantastic. I did not find that to be the case with uh, IGMS or or uh, uh, Guesty for Host. 
Um, so it's it's very clear. Hey, this isn't you know I just like it because it's not my fault. It's like, dude, yeah. it's not you. <laughs> it, there really is an issue here, and we're working on it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, I did like that. All right, let's go into uh, guessing for hosts, uh, formerly known as your Porter, uh, Avery's mom, uh, who is uh, is really good at this, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you get into and just you could just you know be honest whatever you want to say how did you get end up with uh, using uh, guesty for host um i was placed in it <laughs> by <laughs> someone who knows a lot about it i have been a soccer mom a golf mom a cheer mom knew nothing about short term decided okay i'll try this with a lot of assurances from luke and avery that i could in fact learn to do this so he did set me up at the beginning. I didn't have to connect anything. This is what he was using. And I've stuck with it, mainly because I have not had any problems, but also because I don't want to have to reconnect anything, to be perfectly honest. Yes. When the, when I switched it to Hospitable, we, we did consider switching uh, Mrs. Allen. And uh, we, we both decided it wasn't worth it. Um, she was having success. She was happy over there. Uh, switching is, is it's, you know, I mean, again, like I said, switching to hospitable is not a huge deal, but it's not fun. Um, and I think that's her thing. That's kind of one of your things. You want this to basically be as easy as possible, right? Well, I have been told by someone in this room that I need to try a little harder. So I'm working on that, but, um, guest for host is so easy for me. My brain at 60 starting something new doesn't work like y'all's. I love their timeline as opposed to their calendar. The timeline tells you in black and white writing, Jane is checking in on January 3rd. Jane is checking out on January 10th. The bar graph thing was a little hard for me to read quickly on Guesty. So that is, I love the timeline. Right. And all of the softwares, it's interesting you bring that up. They all have that calendar function and it's like, you know, got a bunch of colorful bars Mm -hmm. and things. So interesting perspective. My brain likes the colorful bar calendar and you want the timeline, which is cool. My brain tends to panic and need to get that information immediately or everything's going to go up in smoke. So the black and white writing works beautifully for me. But like I said, you did put me into this and I don't want to have to learn another one. Okay. So where would you say we are on ease of use? You're a person that's never done this before. And, uh, and, and how do you feel about it? One to 10, 10, 10, 10. No easy. I agree. Yeah. I think that guesty for host is Chuck. Have you used it as well as you're shaking your head? Uh, no, I was nodding along with it. I, I tried it out before owner res back when it was, uh, uh, your Porter. Um, it was okay, but it also didn't do some of the things that I really wanted to do. At that okay. time, it wasn't automated enough. But very simple. So we agree. We can we can agree. I'd, so I'd put it personally. I used it for about two years back in the uh, your Porter days, mostly. I would say that it's probably about a nine. Yeah, so we can agree there. Well, I've never uh, looked at any of these other ones. That's true. And yeah. so I don't know the difference. And I probably don't want to do some of the things that Chuck is obviously very good at doing. I'm keeping it simple and small. I love that perspective. I do because you know, at the end of the day, there are probably more people than not that are getting into this to not do a ton of work. Uh, right. And you're proving that that can be uh, <laughs> can be done. It can work. Okay. Functionality. Uh, does it have the bells and whistles you're looking for? Uh, where are we at on that? Yeah. I mean, I love the auto messaging, the lock integration, which I just have done over the past couple of months. Very easy. Uh, you have uh, a slag encode? Yes. Okay. And uh, it, it, have you noticed any issues whatsoever with uh, it changes the code for every guest? None whatsoever. And I did see in the Facebook groups, I was a little hesitant to start it because people kept saying, it's not integrating. It's it's people are jamming the lock. I have not had any trouble. Okay. And I should mention hospitable, same thing. Uh, we do dummy, we dummy check it. Make sure that the code is the act as actually the last four digits of their phone number, and uh, we do occasionally run into an issue on last minute guests, uh, and we will we'll shoot them. We have a an auto message set up for last minute guests. Again, this is not about the operations of of uh, of day to day management here, but um, we shoot them an extra message with a dummy code that mm-hmm. says, "Hey, just in case, try this." Because if it's checking in the middle of the night on the weekend, 
and they just booked five hours before. I don't want to deal with it. So let's give them a dummy code. So I do do that. But um, I, again, I've only had an issue with that once or twice because it like didn't sink fast enough or something. Again, I'm talking hospitable. Uh, so it's nice to know that you haven't had any issues at all over there on, uh, on Guesty for Host. Customer service, have you dealt with them at all? And how do you feel about it? I have my customer service name is Luke. Um, <laughs> And I don't hesitate to use that customer service. Other than that, I've never really had one thing. Another thing I've learned from Luke is Google everything. First, Google. So I've, the few few instances that I've needed help, I'm trying to try harder and not go straight to my customer. One time, one Luke. time I suggested <laughs> maybe she dig a little deeper and I'm still paying for it. I'm working on it. But um I mean, I would say their customer service is a 10 because simply I have not had to use it. In other Everything. words, uh, the, the, the fact that it has made it so that you don't have to use it and they've set up their software to function in such a way, it gives you a, I a, call that a, a good yeah. rating. I call that a 10, yeah. Well, uh, again, I've used it and I have to say you're lucky that you haven't had to contact customer service because it's pretty horrible uh, in my yeah. experience. It doesn't really exist, uh, but I'm glad you learned the Google thing, because any question you have is easily answered by a search uh, or maybe a Facebook group, which is usually you don't have to go to a Facebook group. You can Google YouTube videos for all of this stuff, especially on Guesty for Hosts, because that's their, that's one of their things. I think that they don't really uh, have the uh, customer service, you know, like built into their model so much as mm -hmm. far as like paying these people. So um, they want you to kind of do it on your own, but you're proving that that can be done very easily. So that's yes, great. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Financial reporting, where are we at on that? One to 10. Um, I call it a 10 because I was so apprehensive about having to do any financial reporting, which I've never done. And once you get in and- Never done, meaning look, in your life. In my life, none. Okay. Unless it was, you know, filling up the car with gas to go to soccer practice. That's the, how my financial reporting went. But once you get the statistics button, really has everything I need. Sometimes it's a little clunky change in the dates. Like you said, um, someone else mentioned it was a little hard to get the date set for the reporting, but otherwise it has everything I need. I agree. I agree. I miss the financial reporting on, um, on Guessy for host. And, and again, recollection, uh, it's been a long time, but I feel like it was very similar to what it was on IGMS. Um, uh, Ethan, again, it's easy for you to pull up exactly how much you're making in a month and a, a year. Yep. Just click a button, put it, put in your dates, and you're done. I do, I do feel like those were very similar on those two on IGMS and Guesty for hosts. Uh, you've never switched, so we won't get into that. Um, I feel like I had one more question. I forgot what it was. We'll come back to it. So, any any final words on uh, on on Guesty for hosts? Uh, any encouragement? Any reason that you don't like it? Um, no, basically, as I think is the whole point of me being on here. If if I'm <laughs> going smoothly with it, then other people who try harder and know more will do even better with it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, we'll turn it over to Mr. Kramer then as we get into uh, owner res, which <laughs> uh, I'm going to give a little two cents on owner res. To me, you're an owner res person or you're not. It's like, it's a thing. I have gone so far as to refer to it as a cult in the past. Um, so, uh, and, and it is awesome. It is very awesome. And I'll let you take it from here. I agree with everything you said, including that it can be overwhelming. Um, one of the things that I really liked about owner res at first, uh, and it's because you, someone like me gets over it really quick is that you could use as much or as little of it as you wanted. You didn't have to get into it and use everything. So, um, it is sophisticated, but being being sophisticated also means it has a lot of power. And I was looking for that power. I wanted to, as I've, I've said several times, I wanted to automate as much of this as I can. Right now, my guests, um, uh, when they make an inquiry uh, on Airbnb, uh, as an example, everything comes through to owner res. I can look at it in there. I can approve, disapprove, make special offers. Um, I can also set up a, a rule to do a to go back and forth with them if I want to get more information. Um, I do have an automatic one that, you know, goes out and it, it sounds very conversational just saying, Hey, you know, thanks for uh, looking at our property before we approve. We just, 
you know, want to know a few things like, you know, what brings you to the area? That is word for word what that message says. <laughs> so it sounds as though uh, comes across as though someone's sitting there, you know, actively writing it. Uh, I really like that I can set up those emails and triggers. Um, it just goes through the entire process. I, I spend very little time on most reservations. Um, it, they just come in, they go, they work, there's back and forth. Uh, another thing about owner res that drew me to it was it's third party integrations. And I'm not just talking about channels, although there are a lot of channels that it integrates with. And depending where you are in the country, that may be important or it may not be. Uh, if you're in Florida, you know, there's several uh, smaller regional um, channels like uh, Fine Florida, uh, Florida Rents, um, East Co uh, Emerald Coast by Owner. Um, and there are people that have done very well off, off just listing on those regional sites. Now they can get a package like Owner Res to work with those sites and still do their direct booking if they wish. So that's um, very appealing. That is very appealing. It is. Um, how do I, how do I talk to me about integrating? Like, how do I set this thing up? I've heard, you know, many different stories from different people about some people that were, is very easy. Some people, it took them two months. Uh, why is that? Well, it's, it depends on who you're integrating with. Um, the air Airbnb has a very robust API now. Oh, you got a visitor. <laughs> um, they have a very robust API and owner res is able to connect you to Airbnb within an hour or two. And your listing can be live within 24 hours. Um, in fact, I, I just went through putting a new listing up and it was great. I just sat there and owner res filled out a few things, hit list six hours. And in my case, six hours later, it was live. Um, and since that was, that was being done under a separate company, separate account, it was as though I was connecting for the first time. So, uh, Verbo is different. Their API is very rough. Um, again, they're, they're in the midst of working all this. Plus they have a special team that works on these and they review things. They're very careful about their reputation. So, uh, when you, when you connect to it, they're going to make sure that you're a legitimate person. They're going to check your bank account, you know, the bank account information you gave them to be sure that's got your name on it. Um, they're going to check to make sure the property really exists. Uh, they're going to check to make sure the, uh, um, uh, you are who you, they're going to verify your email. They're going to verify your phone. They're going to go through a whole bunch of this verification. One of the reasons that uh, connecting with Verbo can take so long also is it's one team in Texas and they only work business hours weekdays. So this isn't a team they have spread out all over the world that effectively keeps things moving 24 um, seven. That's a decision that the company's made for their own reasons. I'm not sure. And that, and with the boom that we've had the last two or three years, I don't think that they've expanded this team as fast as they needed to. Some of the, I, I know people that with owner res had trouble. They were waiting up to two months for full integration. Um, uh, now it's down to a couple of days for a brand new account and no time at all for a new listing. Um, so the other sites, it varies. Um, there's there's some smaller sites like I think it's a Go Go Getaway um, and Guest Smiles that I was able to integrate with within 20 minutes. You click a button, you fill out some information, you wait for a confirmation back from them, and boom, you're live. You actually get any bookings from these sites? Um, I haven't from those two. I've gotten a couple of inquiries. Now each one's a, a they're they're sort of specialized. Guest Smiles is targeted more towards group towards travel. Dentists. I'm sorry. It's towards dentists. Yeah, it is. You've looked at it. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, no, it really is because I mean, it's it's a, a lot of their businesses around golf trips, okay. and what they do is they they offer they put together a package. You can go there and you can say, I want to stay in this. I want to play at this course, and then it'll you know, or these courses, and then it'll show you homes around there, and then you book your home, so you can book everything in one place for your golf trip. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it cost me nothing to list there. So, <laughs> I mean, you think we're going in that direction? Are we going to see more niche down uh, listing platforms? Um, people need to do something to differentiate themselves. I think that kind of feature is going to be nice. I mean, is this all that different from Airbnb and their experiences? No. Yeah, I mean, conceptually, it's kind of the same thing. So, um, I I can definitely see that. You know, but. If the one thing you can't do on Airbnb is book your car. 
you know, whereas these folks, uh, uh, they have a uh, integration with um, uh, a couple Turo, of the car Turo. companies, Turo. and I thought Turo was on there as well. So um, I can see that one stop. You want to travel? Uh, you don't want to be messing around with three or four different vendors. You can do it all in one place. I could see that. It's specifically for golf or uh, different types of experiences in general. They have different experiences, but but the majority of ones that I see I've seen on there are golf related. And that kind of uh, makes sense. I think there's, it's important to take away. That. We have not even gotten into the questions uh, on owner res yet. Uh, and because it's, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a certain aspect of, uh, of client out there that, that is going to enjoy the fact that it is so involved in hearing your story. And then other people are going to be like, I, I've, I have already moved on and signed up for hospitable, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> again, proving my point that you are, if you're an owner res person, you are an owner res person. So anyway, go ahead yeah. there, Chuck and uh, continue. Yeah, and we were going down a rabbit hole on on, on that, but that's what owner res is, though. At least <laughs> in my brain, you know. Uh, the fact so, that you have so many channels you connect to, though, um, it's very cool. Yeah, it is. And in turn, they also have other third parties. They have uh, cleaning systems like Turnover B and B uh, and uh, Resort Clean that you can also integrate with. Touch so, Day integrates to owner res, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, they're they're working on uh, more integrations with because uh, I'm a Touch Day guy. Uh, Absolutely, uh, Avery's mom uses Touch Day. Um, and, uh, and they're, they're coming out with more, but they do have, uh, owner res, right? Talk to me about how that works, by the way. Uh, why do I want to integrate, uh, touch day with my management software? What's the, um, well, let me step you through the process it, it, and I, I can do this quickly and it'll sort of self-explain itself. You get a booking for John Smith, uh, owner res sends a token online behind the scenes to touch day system that says there's a new booking for this account that we're, con you're connected to touch day comes in grabs the user's information, the stay date, the things that they need. And in turn, they leave behind, uh, after a couple of hit back and forth, they leave behind the link to that person's personalized guidebook. So now I can send out a, a, a welcome email after they've after this person has finished their uh, checkout process and say, hey, welcome aboard. Uh, We've also created a personalized I'm guide. I'm sorry, uh, you mean uh, uh, the confirmation of booking the property. Uh, when you say yes. check out, I almost thought you they were leaving the house. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, the, the booking the property. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. the booking process. They get a confirmation email from me. It says, thanks. Hey, by the way, we use uh, Touch Day to create these uh, incredible guidebooks that have all this information, and there's a personalized one just for you. Uh, here's the link to it. Um, they click on that when they get, when they get it, it's got their name, it's got their information, it's got their stay dates. Absolutely. I love that. I love that so much because you told me about that over lunch one day, um, that I emailed hospitable and I said, when the hell are you going to do this? Cause I, I love my touch tag and, uh, I would really love to, to be able to provide I, I use URL shortcuts on my touch day. We'll, we'll do a whole nother podcast on this subject, mm -hmm. but, um, the downside is, is that it is a unique code, meaning I can't just go grab it and throw it at somebody because I, I have to like go find I have to go find it. I can't just mm -hmm. like memorize it and type it out. But the upside is that I know whether this person has actually looked at my guide or not. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, on touch state, I'll tell you how many times that URL has been opened. Which is huge because I would assume that people that have actually looked at your guidebook are probably going to be better guests. I have not done a, like a thorough scientific analysis, but I can say the higher the number of opens, the less I hear from them during this day. There's no I, question about that. I got to believe that that is true uh, because, you know, we spend a lot of time on our guidebooks. I mean, I probably spent more time on my guidebooks than I have on my listings, um, but, and they're awesome. I love them. I mean, I have, I actually just got in the mail today, refrigerator QR codes to my guidebook and things, because I agree. The more they look at it, uh, the less of a pain they are not that we we just we love our guests we love yep. our guests but uh you know uh, so that's wonderful all right cool so um let's let's get this thing hooked up and move it along here as far as okay. like, how much time does it take to get it hooked up uh, again we've talked about anywhere from two months to two days but what am i looking at realistically for a noob well um if you if you don't do the api integration with verbo you can get up and running the same day uh, when you what's the downside? Up, why why do I need that? Why do you need the Verbo integration? Yeah. If you went through the first days of COVID, uh, you wouldn't even ask that question. Uh, when you integrate with Verbo, 
you become the credit card processor. So you also need a credit card processing account. Uh, we jumped right on board with Stripe because I could set it up in 30 minutes. Um, if you remember during the first days of COVID, these companies, Verbo nowhere near as much as Airbnb, just started refunding people and canceling reservations. Maybe it was right, maybe it wasn't. That's a whole different debate. But <laughs> um, you know, we a lot of money went out of, uh, out of our pockets, so to speak, when Airbnb decided to just either cancel or force people or convince people to cancel. On the Verbo side, we had a more interactive discussion with our guests, and we saved almost every reservation we had. Uh, we either rebooked them or they came anyway. Because, of course, if you want to get away from a, a communicable disease, a secluded two-bedroom cabin in the mountains is a great place to go. <laughs> um, but this was uh, everybody, not just owner res people. We all had this issue. That's right. Yeah. But with owner with owner res and its API connection to Verbo, we were in charge. We are in charge of the reservation, and Verbo is really nothing more than a marketing site at that point. Are you, so, so you're taking the actual payment yourself, and Verbo has nothing to do with the payment. Correct. Is that an nothing. option? Um, if you're API connected, you have to handle the credit card. Why do I want to deal it? with all that? It sounds like a lot of work. Uh, I rarely deal with it. Once you set it up, it's all automated. And do I save money for that or? Um, no, uh, it depends on your credit card processor. Stripe is 3%, Verbo is 3%. So that's a wash. Okay. But um, when you get into situations of chargebacks, for example, uh, how hard do you think Verbo is going to fight over a $400 chargeback? you know, from a guest who, uh, for whatever reason, files one. Um, I don't see them spending a lot of labor time on that. They're going to do a couple perfunctory things, send it through. What you're saying now, is it gives me more control over my money. I, I'm I'm actually the business owner. And, and because a lot of times Verbo and Airbnb, especially Airbnb, you didn't hear that from me, can kind of pretend like, make it feel like they own our property. Uh, and what you're saying here is that you're basically taking the power back. That's right. Oh, I like that. That's cool. It does sound complicated, but uh, I like the concept. Very yeah. cool. Uh, All right. Um, I'm getting. I'm going to get jump back to the third party integrations in the early days when I was looking for something. Uh, Owner Res was the only one I found that integrated with Remote Lock, and, re and with Remote Lock, I was able to get to the Schlegs and the Quick Keys. Right. Remote Lock used to be a very common uh, third party that would integrate with Wi-Fi. Uh, deadbolts that, you know, in the early days of this, which is really not that long ago. And most of these, these wet Wi-Fi deadbolts had uh, a hub, uh, the smart, the smart things hub or something. So that yep. uh, resort lock would communicate with the hub. And then resort lock would also communicate with your management software. And it was a way for us to be able to change our codes from a distance. Now it's been with the uh, invention of the end code uh, on code, however you want to say it. And also, you know, like the nest Yale is a very popular, it does the same thing, but it does have a hub. Um, uh, th there's several of them out there now, but, um, but yes, uh, uh, just to clarify what you're talking about that I can imagine, especially at the time that was huge. Yeah. Um, I still use it. Um, I like the notifications. I like the fact that I can go in and set up one code for my handyman that then gets spread all across my properties that he's going to have access to. That's cool. I can get alerts when my pest guy opens the door, um, you know, which helps me correlate when the bill comes and make sure that that really happened. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I still use it because of that other, mostly of the reporting features. So, all right, let's, but, let's uh, get that, into the questions and then uh, I'll, I'll let you follow up with any more comments that you want to make on the old, absolutely. Owner what the hell happened to my questions? Here we go. Number one, ease of use. <laughs> one to ten. Um, start, starting out, I, I'm going to have to answer this two numbers. Starting out, I'd say a four because to a noob, there's things that are not intuitive. Um, they are improving. Um, They've also had an influx of capital and are are improving. Uh, once you get up and running, I'd say it's about an eight. Um, and if you're more, you know, if you're more technical in nature, uh, and I'm, by technical, I'm not necessarily meaning software, but for instance, if you're you're used to working with spreadsheets um, and simple logic things, then uh, it can be a ten. So, I think you're being a little generous, but okay, I'll give it to you. Number two, functionality. <laughs> no question, it's a ten. Absolutely. It, It'll do any almost anything and everything you want, and in a way that uh, uh, your guests will hardly realize that it's automated. Ethan, have you dabbled at all with uh, with Owner Res? No. Nope. Uh, Chuck, have you dabbled at all with Guesty? Guesty, Guesty. 
Uh, not guesty, guesty, no. Uh, hospitable. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I, I looked at hospitable school. a few months ago uh, from hospital. just to know it. Uh, yeah, I'm well, hospital, obviously. Yeah, hostfully, I have. I played with it a few months ago after where's, I. Where's heard hostfully about it. compared to an owner res? They seem to be somewhat similar, yes, uh, from an outsider's um, perspective. Hostfully, want, my impression is this hostfully wants to be an owner res. Okay. Um, and but they're also approaching it from a better design perspective. Um, I've kind of had it up to here with websites that are pretty but don't work. Oh, okay. Um, you know, including amongst the uh, Fortune 50, Fortune 100. Um, I I want to make sure it, to me it's got to work. Work on pretty later, but it's got to work. <laughs> so, because uh, owner res um, is not pretty. No. 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 It's no. like two colors. And, it, and once and you be, once you become as big and complicated as they are, it's difficult to put a new face on it. Right. But but yeah. I have seen the roadmap, and you know, I think this conversation will be different a year, eighteen months from now. So, Customer yeah. service. Where am I at, and how often do I need them? Um, I'm going to say eight. Uh, it's only by email. They're normally fast. Uh, within the same day. Yep. Um. Uh, the th uh, there's a lot of third party options. Uh, there is an official owner res Facebook group. Um, there is a unofficial owner res support group, which is the first place I would send anybody. It's got some really good moderators, people in it. <laughs> um, uh, and then there's actually even a Smokies owner res group. So you are a moderator on the uh, unofficial uh, owner res uh, Facebook group. Uh, I'm in there a lot. You know, to be honest, I can't remember if I'm a moderator or not. But um, and there's one specifically for the Smokies. Why yeah. would location have anything to do with it, or is it other than the fact that it's just the biggest market in in the nation? Uh, someone got together, created the group, um, and <laughs> it actually drove some new features in Onores. One of those is that um, this the, for the Smokies group, the Onores created what they call a property share that you can join. And it's a way of putting together a whole bunch of otherwise disparate properties into one group, almost like a fake property manager. So um, for those of us that have direct booking sites and use owner res, when you go to our site, you have our stuff, but there's also a link that will search everyone else that's in that group. So it's a way of, if I can't service you, I can throw business to the other people that I work with. And in turn, they throw business to me. Now the, that whole property share group thing is an official uh, feature of the software. And um, uh, there are a number of big ones. In fact, there's there's a new one here along the Emerald Coast that's got over over 100 properties uh, and it's growing fast. They're, they're pushing these as a way. It's, an, it's just another way to get more visibility for your property. This, is, uh, this sounds to me like it's perfect for engineers. So were you an engineer? <laughs> I was not an engineer. No, no, but it is that type of brain we're talking about here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can Fi be. Financial reporting, where are we at? Ten. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, they have a tremendous number of built-in reports, tremendous number of filters. And if you can't get precisely what you want, their export capability it, to spreadsheet format is uh, is the best I've seen. I agree. That's one of the major benefits of uh, owner res. Other than for me, the uh, auto rental agreement signature is absolutely fantastic i've not been able to find that anywhere else there is a third party out there called super hog that does rental agreement signatures they also do insurance the downside of super hog they only allow one rental agreement across all of your properties i've got one property that's got a hot tub one property that's got a pool they're going to have different rental agreements so that doesn't work for me uh owner res does this automatically is it seamless are you using that function because to me that is a major bonus uh, yeah, I am absolutely using that, and it is very seamless. Um, it'll even insert your custom cancellation policy uh, that you've created that you put in when you create your property. Um, it goes out. Of, I hardly touch it. I even get reminders to let me know when a guest has not signed it, but the guest is also getting reminders. Uh, I I think this past year I only had to get involved five or six times to like. Uh, and this is before I went with the SMS features that it has. I used to text the guests saying, hey, look, we've been trying to reach you. You need to sign your renter agreement. But now I have, since I've added the SMS service to my owner res account, I don't even do that. Interesting. <laughs> Each one's separate. And I've even found a way to game it to get it to do two agreements. To do what? what I'm sorry? 
two agreements. Oh, two agreements. One of our property says a golf cart, so we have a golf cart. Oh, addendum. interesting. Cool. I uh, I have a I have a rental agreement system of my own uh, that is not integrated, uh, but I will uh, share that on a future podcast. Where are we on switching? If I wanted to switch into or out of owner res, how difficult? Um, I would put this at about a nine. Because remember, most of your data is still going to be sitting on Airbnb and Verbo. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing about switching, no matter what product you use, remember to copy out all of the um, different replies and uh, stuff that you've created in there so you can just paste them into the new one. So. Okay, great. All right, listen, we're going to wrap it up. Let me ask you one more question uh, for each of you on the way out the door. Do you use the auto review function of your software? I will start. I ha I do not use it. I used to use it. Um, I have found that uh, since turning it off, which has been quite a while now, uh, not quite a year, maybe, I go through and manually, manually do my reviews in, in chunks about once a week. And I do find that that helps uh, with uh, the quality of my reviews a little bit. I, I will also say uh, along those same lines, I have uh, I've used less automation over the years. Back when IGMS Air GMS first came out, I've made it my mission in life to never do anything again with my short terms. I was like, this is brilliant. I'm going to systematize the crap out of this so that I never have to talk to a guest ever again. Uh, today, this it's it's much uh, the opposite. I actually have turned off many of my auto messages. I don't even do an auto goodbye anymore. I do a, a lot more manual. Of course, I do have somebody working for me full time. We kind of do that. We, we kind of tag team it a little bit. Um, she's mostly in charge, but I'll, I'll uh, definitely uh, pop in without micromanaging her. And of course, she does have days off as well. Um, so I, I, uh, I've actually, I've actually kind of fallen in love a little bit uh, with the business again after all these years. And I, and I really have found value in providing my guests with a kick-ass va vacation. So, long story short. Currently not using auto reviews, doing it manually. Ethan, are you using them? And uh, and do you find it to be advantageous? We did the same thing as you. We had them on for a bit. Uh, got it turned off right now. Just do do our own reviews. Um, getting better reviews because of it or uh, just feeling maybe a little more confident in general? A little more confident. Um, we like to give our guests the honest reviews back. And, you know, you can't you're setting a five-star review back. So uh, if it, they're not all five stars, so we're, we're doing that. Um, we're, we, we're sending a, a personalized message, but no, we, we, we had it on and just like the, to do it ourselves. It's interesting the way you put that, because that's why I uh, enjoy doing it myself uh, because certain guests deserve it. You know, they, they've been, you know, they, it's almost like they tried hard to get this review. And if you're just doing a canned review, it's almost like they, uh, I feel like they may be disappointed. I, I don't know that that's true or not, but that vibe is not something I want to be putting into the universe. So I do like to do little handwritten messages for the, especially for the cool guests, you know, you, this person was a rock star, you know, this type of thing. So, um, uh, Cindy, I will say that, um, of anybody I've ever looked at, I hate this. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like I'm kissing my mother-in-law's ass here, but, uh, your reviews are, at, I mean, they're incredible to the point where they look fake. Um, Thank you. so I think you're actually the reason I thought to think, to ask this question. Um, do you do all of that by hand or is it just luck? Because if you go to her listing, it is absolutely, in, it's ridiculous. The, the reviews you're getting. Okay. Stop with that. Don't jinx me. <laughs> Can I but marry yeah, your I'm, daughter? I, I would love I, to marry your daughter. How about that? <laughs> uh, anyway. I, I do them myself. Um, and I always have in the back of my mind, how many times have we heard, don't be the cookie lady. And so I'm not the cookie lady with reviews, but you know, if they mentioned I'm coming with my teenage daughters, I might say, hope your teenage daughters had a good time. Just something personal. Yes. And what you mean by the cookie lady is, uh, that's an old story I used to tell is uh, there's the, you know, there's a couple of types of hosts. One is like, you know, I, I'm a fast talking kind of, a, you know, rough Yankee type guy. I'm trying to get better at that. And then there's the sweet cookie lady, which actually came from uh, a trailer that your daughter and I stayed in on the uh, Red River in uh, Arkansas, which is fantastic fishing, by the way, trout fishing. Uh, it was a, mo a mobile home. We stayed it with some friends and uh, they had, it was an, it was a Verbo and they had, this lady had homemade waffle batter in the fridge, which 
when we booked the house, all of us were like, this is so ridiculous. This is kind of, it kind of was gross, you know? But we got there and we showed up and like this, it was, the, it was a whole thing that it was this trailer with waffle batter. I mean, everything in this guest, there was a guest book and every page was the waffles were incredible. The waffles were incredible. And um, she actually forgot to bring us the waffle batter. So she showed up at the door and knocked and said, here's the waffle batter. I know you like looked at us like we were, we traveled all the way across the entire world to get this waffle batter at this trailer. Um, so that's where the cookie lady story comes from. And it was actually the waffle lady uh, going way above and beyond to uh, mm. help out your guests is what she's referring to there. Um, and I have done my best to, to become a little bit more waffle lady over, over time. But um, so uh, yeah, handwriting your message, your, your uh, reviews is, I mean, whatever you're doing is working. Any other tips for us on better reviews? Have you ever gotten anything less than four stars? She doesn't want to say no. She's shaking oh, no, her head. No, no, no. She wants. I don't. Don't say no because then she's putting it in the universe, and then <laughs> next thing you know. But uh, also, I didn't know I was supposed to mute myself when I'm not talking. So no, 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 no. Nobody noticed. No big deal. Okay. Uh, yeah, you did wonderful. So uh, okay, Chuck, are you using auto review? <laughs> I am, uh, only to an extent though. Um, I have them set up. I've got 140 different templates. Uh, the templates chosen at random. But I do, since Onares has a, a tremendous amount of capability, <laughs> plug, um, when I get a reservation and people go through the booking process, one of the questions I ask is, what you know, what brings you and is this a special occasion? And I do look at those because they come into my email. Wait a minute, and wait a minute. Someone, How, when are you asking them this? Like on the, before they check in? Um, when someone books online, uh, they get pushed to our website. Uh, afterwards so that we can collect their full name, address, phone number. We also collect our own security deposits. Um, they sign the rental agreement. It's like so much work. Do they have to do this? What if they say no? Yep. They can go book somewhere else. Okay, interesting. So one of the questions you ask in that process is, um, is it a special occasion? Yeah. Okay. And this comes to me in the email when the booking's complete and I can look at it. If it's something like we're coming for my daughter's birthday, teenage daughter's birthday. Um, I have a field next time I fit, I'm on Odores, I fill in that field. It'll drop that into some of the templates. So I can grab that kind of personal information and then make my responses look more personal. Wow. That is fancy. Look at you and your owner res. And then uh, okay. um, res supports tags. Uh, you know, if you've done anything with Gmail or, uh, you know, on a, on a Mac or any number of things, you can tag something with a, so I have a tag that's uh, never again, <laughs> um, you know, difficult guest or anyone that might not be a five star. Um, as soon as I get that vibe from them, I, I add that tag to the reservation and the auto review doesn't go out, but instead owner res starts sending, I have, I have it send me messages to remind me to do reviews. Do you do a personal email? Uh, do you leave them a review at all or no review at all? Um, it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, in other words, that's just a flag for you to basically reassess later as to whether you're going to review them at all or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, guys, we are out of time. I'm going to ask you one more question. Anybody in the room, uh, start with Ethan, uh, good book you have read recently, recently, uh, recently be the wealthy gardener. Ah, yes. Fantastic. Yeah. You heard about that on Avery's podcast. Yeah, I think I heard about I it from you somewhere. It's yeah, huh? I heard about you, it. I heard on about Avery's it. Spot. Yeah, yeah. You were Avery's by. It was it was great. So okay, um, uh, thank you for paying attention. I I heard about it on Avery's podcast and read it, and it was incredible. It was yeah. almost like um, it was kind of like it's kind of like a combination of uh, the Millionaire Next Door and the Alchemist. Yeah. Very Alchemist, and it's 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 uh. Ethan, is that a fiction book? I think it's not. It's not uh, nonfiction, right? Uh, the, it's kind of two part. It kind of he kind of tells a story, and then he goes out of the story to kind of talk about it. Is is how I remember that. So, uh, it, but it's story based. It's really I listen to it on Audible. It's a really easy listen. Is it based on a true story or no? Uh, you're asking the wrong person. Yeah, I don't. I think it is fiction, yeah. but I could be wrong on that. Cindy, uh, any book you've read recently that was any good? This is where I'm very different from your other people. I only read psychological thrillers. Okay, and that's okay. I'm reading one right now called Just the Nicest Couple. 
And oh. it's, it's gotten a lot of good reviews, but it's definitely a psychological thriller, not a business book. I'm okay. not learning anything. Avery's mom is very into true crime. Uh, as, as and well as... not fictional crime also. Okay. Oh, fictional. Well, okay. Much like your daughter. She loves all that, uh, <laughs> most, especially the true crime. What we you were actually, about? Speaking of true crime, we just watched that documentary on Netflix called um, The uh, uh, Hatchet Wielding uh, Hitchhiker, which Hitchhiker. was fantastic. Did you watch that? Not yet. Oh, you have to. It's wonderful. Uh, uh, Mr. Kramer, a good book you've read recently. Uh, well, I read a lot of fiction. The best book I've read recently actually is a nonfiction, and it's called Who Gets What and Why by Alan Roth. When I, I read not nonfiction. Read that. Tell me a, two, a, a quick uh, synopsis there. Basically, it's it's all around financial management and investing philosophy. Um, you know, rich, maybe a modern day rich day poor dad. Although I think that I may be over complimenting it. <laughs> is it uh? Is it short long? Um, <laughs> uh, it was about a six to eight hour read for me. Okay. An actual read. Oh, read not you not not audible. Not this one, yeah. Uh, Ethan, you're an audible guy. Correct. I can't relate to somebody who actually reads a book. It puts me right to sleep. So. Oh, I've I've read over 500 Audible books. So, you know, I've, it's my preference. But someone sent me this book, literally okay. the hard copy. And, um, you know, so I read it. Over and 500. I don't know what my number is. Now we've got a competition going on here. Well, listen, you guys are wonderful. Uh, we, we, you've, you've said it all. Uh, we've said too much. It's been fantastic. Um, and uh, I can't thank you enough. And, and uh, we'll talk to you soon here at the Short-Term Management Show. Uh, have a wonderful year, and uh, may you have all the uh, all the greatest guests uh, in the entire world. Thanks, Luke. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir.